the bell rings, we welcome you to worship on this Trinity Sunday, the celebration of God, three in one. And I invite you to pay attention to the announcements. There are Bible studies, there are prayer meeting, there is a community trust meeting. And then note the last announcement. Our session has voted to pay half the fees of anyone who'd like to go to camp. There are scholarships available for at least one-third of the cost through the presbytery. And then there is extra money if you don't have any money at all but want to go to camp, let us know. We'll make sure you go to camp. Camp is July 11th through 16th. Registration is online. Let me know if you haven't registered and like to register and we'll try to get you registered. Are there any additional announcements that need to be made? If not, our song of preparation is both in the hymn book and printed in your bulletin. It's 244 if you want the music. Oh. 
be surprised. Children, come forward for our children's message. Come on now. There we go. Plenty of room. Here you go. Come on down. Good. <laughs> Can you see what I have in here? Is that ice? What else is in there? Water. Now do you see what forms on the bottom of the pan? Fog. Good. We have ice, water, and fog. So, how do you get ice? Do you know how ice is formed? From storms, okay? It does come from the sky. What happens if you put water in your freezer? What does it turn to? Ice. And what happens if you put this ice out in just a normal temperature? What happens to that ice? It melts into water. I want to talk to you today about the Trinity, which is a fancy word for God having three forms. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It can be kind of confusing, but it's kind of like ice and water and steam or fog. They all three come from water, but they're in different forms. Ice is a solid. Oops. When it drips, it's a liquid. And when I blow on it, it becomes a vapor or a gas. It's kind of like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One in substance, all made of the same thing, but in three different persons. Is that as clear as mud? Yes, thank you, rival. Because when you pour water into the dirt, what does it form? Mud. Yeah, the Trinity is a little like that. It's muddy in our minds. But here's what I want you to know. God is with you always in one of these forms. God is with you always. And we need to give God praise. So, I'm going to ask you to sing with me. All you have to do is repeat what I sing. Okay? Can you do that? Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Son. Praise the Holy Spirit. Praise the Holy Spirit. Three in one. Three in one. Try it again. Ready? You got it. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Son. Praise the Holy Spirit. Praise the Holy Spirit. with treats in them and coloring sheets. Thank you for coming up for the children's message. Use the red one to match your dress. Perfect, you may go to your seats, thank you. session members.
We will have a brief session meeting afterwards, so please stay after in the little room. I think we have corn. Prayer concerns today. Joys or concerns to be lifted up in prayer. Rita? Can I just remind people next week they can bring back their baby bottles that they filled up? Baby bottle boomerang project. Many of you picked up baby bottles. They boomerang back on Father's Day. We gave them out Mother's Day to Father's Day. So bring back your bottles, but if you forget or if they're late, I think they'll accept them anyway. Yep. But next week's the day. Thank you. Others today? Zoe Reed. Zoe Reed just finished her freshman year. Been running fevers and they can't really figure out what's going on. Through lots of tests, if you would remember the whole Reed family and especially Zoe in our prayers. Thank you. Yes? I don't think that Garland, he had a hip surgery on Tuesday and uh, he's, he's doing okay. Uh, he has a lot of anxiety, of course, so um, he comes through it pretty good, though, I would say. Garland Walter. Walter. We lift Garland up as he recovers from surgery. I'll start way back. The family of Tyrell Miller, whose service was this week. Tyrell killed in the accident, perhaps you read about on Highway Interstate 35. So please remember his grieving family, including his fiance. Our friend Aaron Gray, that used to come to church with us. This week found out he has a tumor behind his ear drum. Aaron Gray with a tumor. We lift him up as they decide what to do. Ashley. Safe travels for Lily and the Crescent Band are on the way back from Disney today. They should arrive at 10.30 tonight. We left last night. Lily Hanscom with the Crescent Band and I've been reading the paper and I haven't heard of any wild things coming out of Florida. So I guess Lily must be okay. We also want to lift up our daughter, Naomi, and her husband, Matt. They're in Athens, Greece. And they give thanks for the fact that President Biden lifted now the rule that you have to have a negative COVID test to come home. So they won't have to stay an extra 10 days if they accidentally got COVID, but they're doing well. So we lift them up. Sandy? If you'll continue to remember Willie, who's here with us today, his daughter Deanna, the chemo that they were using didn't seem fully effective. She's gone back to an earlier chemo, which isn't fully effective, but more effective. She needs our special prayers. And prayers for Willie's family as they're all kind of traveling in to see you, aren't they, Willie? Soon. And lift up Willie as well. Thank you, Sandy. Sandra. Cal Peterman will be going through surgery this week. I believe it's tomorrow. Cal Peterman from Bedford. Surgery. Lift him up. Jeannie. Uh, prayers for uh, Keith and Jeannie Lindale. They'll celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary this week. A 60th anniversary for Keith and Jeannie Lindell. We'll lift them up. Others today to be lifted up? I think two others, and it'll set us up for our song. Um, I read an article on the AP <coughs> Associated Press feed that the Ukrainians are afraid that we in America have gotten war fatigue, and that we're not remembering them in prayer and in our hearts anymore. So I thought we should lift up the people of Ukraine. Then Jamie Fitzgerald has a grandson that is going into the service, and he will be 
in a basic training until November, is that right, Connor Fitzgerald? He'll be in, uh, I think it's South Carolina, and gra graduates in August, and then uh, the family will have one day with him, and then he'll go to Virginia, and he'll start his diesel mechanic school. And so if we look up the Yeah. And also Levi Breach, who is in training. And his family worships with us online many Sundays. So if we lift up the people of Ukraine and Connor and Levi, in addition to those that we have named. Any others? I don't want to leave anyone out. Vanessa. For all of us on the church camp, especially the shocking homesickness here in the all. Yes. Vanessa's praying in advance for all those who go to church camp and that she won't get homesick. <coughs> so just don't keep a boyfriend at home and it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, kind and merciful God, we thank you for our youth. And Lord, we treasure them and ask your protection upon them. Not just our youth, but youth all over the world, in the Ukraine, where there is war, in the Horn of Africa, where there is famine, in Afghanistan, where war has continued for years and years and years. We also give thanks, Lord, that you are with one of our youth, Zoe, as she goes through a trial, Lord, bring her health and healing and help the doctors figure out what's going wrong. As we lift up Zoe, we also lift up Aaron Gray with the tumor. We lift up Rick Nelson, who has just gone through heart valve surgery. We lift up Marlon Walter, recovering from surgery. And the Tyrell Miller family, his fiance Shannon, we lift up Matt and Naomi traveling in Greece, and Lily traveling home from Florida. We lift up Willie, his daughter Deanna, not forgetting Debbie. Lord, strengthen them and be with Stephen, his son, as he comes back for a visit. For Cal Peterman facing surgery. For Keith and Jeannie Lindell on a 60th anniversary. For the people of Ukraine. For Connor and Levi, and Vanessa, and all who go to camp. Lord, we lift up prayers, the prayers of the people, praying the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn, 245. It's a Trinity hymn, and it's a hymn remembering all travelers and service people. Eternal Father, strong to save. Remain seated as we sing together.
Presbyterian Church Camp, July 11 through 16, designed for kids from grades third through senior in high school. And that's if you finished third and finished your senior in high school. We'd love to have you go to camp. Second, the fifth anniversary of the first Arabic Presbyterian Church took place. Nine persons from our congregation were able to go, meeting four persons from the Sharpsburg congregation, meaning our Trinity larger parish contingent was 13 as we celebrated with the first Arabic Presbyterian Church. And I remind you that any gifts given to the First Arabic Presbyterian Church in the month of June, if you mark that on your check, they will be matched by the session that has already sent $500 in advance, plus whatever gifts you have matched. We're hoping for $1,500 or more. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. Servant who hastened to prepare it. 
Then Abraham took curds and milk and the calf he had prepared and set them before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They, God, said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? And say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied laughing, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. But God said to her, Oh, yes, you did laugh. <laughs> the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> Our second three verse scripture, I will do alone. From 2 Corinthians 13, the last three verses. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday, and I have to admit, since the time I was a child, I've always loved the Trinity. You know, I was one of those kids that liked to ask questions and get teachers kind of befuddled. And whenever they tried to teach me about the Trinity, I could always ask them questions that would get them a little bit confused. But how can you be one and yet be three? How can God take on human form? How can God be a spirit? How? You know what our creeds say about the Trinity? Two things. It's a mystery. And it's a paradox. A mystery cannot be fully understood by the human mind. Paradox. Seemingly contradictory. You know that Jews and Muslims alike reject the Trinity saying there is one God and one God only. But we Christians Though we're not able to explain it well, we put our trust in God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And for the most part, we believe it. But a strange thing happened to me. I'm into putting in phrases in the computer and then hitting images on my computer to show me what image comes up. I put in Trinity, and guess what popped up? Three men sitting at a table with bread and meat and milk under an oak tree. It was an icon by Andre Rublev, a 14th century Russian artist, an icon in the Eastern Orthodox Church, is a picture meant to help us in our worship. And when he painted his painting of the Trinity, Rublev depicted the three men who appeared to Abraham and Sarah. It's the first appearance of a godly trinity in the Bible. 
It happens in the 18th chapter of Genesis. And it begins, The Lord appeared to Abraham, who looked up and saw three men standing near him. Now, scholars, you can look it up. Scholars continually debate about these three men. Some say they were actually angels. Some say no, it was actually God in three persons. Others argue, no, God was one of the three, and the other two were just men. Believe me, there's more explanations than those three. Everybody seems confused. But that's the Trinity. What pains me about the Trinity, this doctrine in the church, it was the cause of the largest split in the history of the church. 373 AD, the Eastern Orthodox Church split off from the Roman Catholic Church over the doctrine of the Trinity. The Western Church, the Roman Catholic, from which we are descendants, all of us, said that the Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father and the Son, whereas the Eastern Orthodox Church said no, both Jesus and the Holy Spirit came from the Father. The Spirit came upon Jesus, not from Jesus. Both had scriptures to back up their position, and they split, and the split has never been resolved. So rather than preach on the doctrine of the Trinity today, I thought maybe we should go back and look at the first Trinity appearance of God in the Bible. Asking a different question, not who were these three men exactly, but why did they come to Abraham? Now, as we seek to answer that question, I'd like us to look first at when they came to Abraham. It's easily missed. They appeared to Abraham in the heat of the day. We're talking the Middle East here. Travelers rarely, if ever, travel during the day historians tell us, but early in the morning or late at night, and those who traveled in the day could easily get heat exhaustion. God appeared to Abraham in the heat of the day. And I suggest that that's when God appears to us, too, in the heat of our days. When everything is boiling over and nothing is going right, when we're at our wit's end, God comes to us in the midst of wars in Ukraine, in the midst of people shooting children with automatic weapons, in the midst of leaders in the world who think it's all about them, in the midst of the rich getting richer. They're not crying at the oil companies because gas is five dollars a gallon. The rich get richer, the strong prey on the poor. Children are suffering throughout the world. Is it too much to expect that God will appear to us in the heat of the day? But when God comes, God often tests us, too. Are we doing what God has called us to do? In Jewish teaching, there are few sins greater than refusing to show hospitality to a stranger who comes to your tent in the middle of the day. Because if you turn them away, they will likely die of hunger and thirst and heat exhaustion. 
You were expected to take in the stranger. God, some scholars believe, was testing Abraham to see if Abraham would welcome the three men in the heat of the day. And of course, Abraham passed that test. Or should we say, Sarah and the servants passed the test. Because I'm sure you women noticed that Abraham said, Oh, please, sit down. We'll get you some food. And then he runs to Sarah and says, Start making bread. And he runs to the servants and says, Start milking the cow and kill the fatted calf. And then when it's all ready, he brings it in as if he had anything to do with it. But he showed hospitality to a stranger. Do you think God might be testing us sometimes? Sandra noticed a week and a half ago that someone had spent the night in our church. We didn't even know it, except for a bathroom visit and a blanket left on a couch. Hospitality to strangers is part of the New Testament, too. Hebrews 13.1 reads, Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels unaware. We had a prayer concern in the Sharpsburg Church today for Bert. Who's Bert? I asked those who lifted up prayer. Well, we were eating at a restaurant <coughs> in Maryville, and the waitress seemed a bit distraught, and so we asked her, and she told us that her husband, Bird, is very sick and needs heart surgery. And we told her, we will lift him up in our church and pray for him. A stranger. So we prayed hard today in the Sharpsburg Church for Bert because two of our members showed hospitality to a stranger in a time of need. You know, that's what it means to believe in the Trinity, not figuring out exactly how the doctrine works and when God appears, figuring out whether it was Christ who spoke to you or Jesus, uh, the Spirit who spoke to you or God the Father with a booming voice from heaven. To believe in the Trinity is to do the work of God, to do the work of Jesus Christ, to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, who came to Abraham and Sarah in the heat of the day. And by the way, God came to Abraham and Sarah to bring them the news that God's promise would be kept. You know what that promise was? that Abraham and Sarah would give birth to a child. Now the promise was made to them back when they were young. But 50 or 60 years had passed. God had come to them four other times to reaffirm this promise. But Abraham was now nearly 100. And Sarah, 90. And past the manner of women. They had given up that they would never have the child as God promised. But God appeared to them in person to say, no, the time is now. A year from now I will return and you will be cradling a baby. And Sarah, like Becky, laughed. She laughed to herself. Sarah laughed, ha, ha, I am nearly 91. Sarah laughed, ha, ha, I am nearly 91. That was a song that Sandy learned and taught me when she was teaching Sunday school here long ago to the children about God keeping God's promises. Abraham and Sarah had both given up. By the way, Sarah was not the first to laugh. If you look back in chapter 17, just before this happened, God gave Abraham a heads up that it was about to happen, and he laughed too. Both of them laughed. 
But God didn't care. God who makes promises keeps them, no matter how faithful or faithless we might be. But God keeps God's promises in God's time. I don't know about you, but I'm not reading as much as I was about the war in Ukraine because it's too painful. And it's easier just to kind of push it to the side. I am not reading any more articles about the slaughter in Texas because I can't handle it. Knowing my daughter's going into a school every day as a substitute teacher. I'm not doing what I should toward those who are in prison. I was supposed to go yesterday and I was just too tired to go down to the jail. I had nothing left to give. But God is faithful in God's time. One day, wars will cease. One day, children won't get shot up at school. One day, we will reach out to one another with love and mutual affection and do what the Apostle Paul said the Corinthians were doing, greeting one another with a holy kiss and listening to one another's problems. You know, I came to Lennox more hopeful than I was at Sharpsburg because two women in my Sharpsburg church reached out to a hurting, lonely waitress in Maryville, Missouri and gave her hope and made a promise to pray and kept that promise and held the whole church pray. I don't know what's going to happen to Bert, but we place him in God's care. Abraham and Sarah, through all the travails of their life, were in God's care. And in the end, when Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 91, they gave birth to a child. You know what they named that child? Isaac, which means laughter. Yes, they were in on the joke that God played on them, making them wait to the end as a message to us that when God doesn't seem to deliver, God is there. God was there with the Miller family this week after a tragic death. And God was there in the form of God's people, surrounding them with love and lifting them up in time of need. God keeps God's promises, sometimes through us, strengthening us in numerous ways. including with the gift of Holy Communion. On the night in which he was betrayed, the night before he would hang on the cross for the sins of the world, Jesus gathered his disciples and he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And in the same manner also, he took up the cup and he poured saying, this is the cup of the new covenant of my blood poured out for you. Drink of this in remembrance of me for as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you remember Jesus' death until he comes again. Let us pray. Creator God, you made us in your image, created us good, but when we had fallen into sin, you sent Jesus Christ, born of woman, but fully God and fully human. He lived among us, showing us how to live. He died for our sins and was raised for our salvation. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these common elements that they might represent for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. And Lord, as you consecrate this bread and this juice, consecrate the bread and the juice in all the homes 
or they're watching via a live stream, or via YouTube, or via the cable channel. Bless, O oh Lord, your elements everywhere. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Would members serving on session come forward? And Vera, would you represent Becky so she can play some music while we take communion? Bridal, would you move over and let Julie sit there with Jake? Steve, do you want to send a representative or do you want to come? Sarah, would you please come and join us? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ is broken for you. Please hold the bread till all have been served that we might eat together. And by the way, in our new communion set, gluten-free in the middle for all who need it. Elders. Afterwards, they took of the cup. Drink. This is my blood shed for you, Jesus said. We sold the cup till all have been served that we might drink together.
Christ shed for the forgiveness of sins for all who put their trust in him. Brothers and sisters, let us drink together. Let us pray. Lord, you have fed us with spiritual food. Now send us forth to do your work and your will. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you.